Good morning. It's great to see you today. Can I give you a really warm welcome here to Lakeside Church? Going to be in for a great morning together. I know people are coming in. If you want to come in, just come and take your seats. It really is great to have you here with us today. Those of you watching online as well, we're delighted that you're able to join with us. So please say hi to Anne in the chat. She'd love to be able to connect with you. Why don't you stand to your feet if you're able to? We're going to be here for around 75 80 minutes. That's the plan. We're going to be sharing communion together this morning because it's the first Sunday in the month. And so I'm hoping that you'll have picked up one of these little cups as you came in. If you haven't yet got one, don't worry. There are some on this unit over here. So during the worship, during the singing, feel free to come and pick one up there so you can join in with us later on that as well. So those of you watching online, make sure that you've got your emblems at home so you can join in with us also but my name's Richard for those of you that don't know me part of the team here and uh, looking forward to us being together Suzanne and the team are going to lead us in some songs in a in a few moments but why don't you just turn don't get out of your seat just turn around to the person next to you and say thank you for sitting next to me today you may have come with them you might not have come with them (laughs) but we want everyone to feel welcome here And as we come now to spend some time in some sung worship, why don't we just prepare our hearts, ready to engage with all that God wants to come and do and say to us this morning. You know, the psalmist writes, come let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Father, we thank you that we can be here today. We thank you that that you are here. That's the most important thing, Lord, because what we don't want to do is go through some religious ritual just to kill some time. Lord, we want to encounter you in this place. We want to encounter your love and your grace. And we thank you that you're here and you've got that in abundance that you want to pour out and shower upon us. And so as we open up our hearts and as we get ready to to worship you, to lift up your name in this place. Would you come? Would you come and do what only you can do? Lord, where where hearts are hurting, would you come and bring healing and release and hope and release that into their their lives today? Lord, for those who are finding it difficult at the moment, come and strengthen within, we pray. But Lord, we thank you that you've got something for each one of us here. And so come and have your way. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Yeah, come on, let's just, let's not just rely for words upon a screen for us to express our love and our gratitude towards Jesus this morning. Just while the band keeps playing, if you know and love him, let's just, as one voice together, let's just lift up our praise before him this morning. Jesus, we love you. We're not ashamed to tell you today, Lord, that we love you. And we're so grateful for, for not just who you are, but all you continue to do for us and pour into our lives. And today, this is our response. This is how we simply want to say and express our gratitude back to you to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, that it was your love that, that changed everything for us. And it's your love that will continue to change everything, that will continue to transform us and draw us close. And Lord, we don't just want those to be nice words to a nice tune, but that's the, that's the cry of our hearts this morning, Father, that we say, draw us close to you. Draw us close to you. Lord, that we might come closer, ever closer to you and know and experience your grace and your love in an even deeper way. Thank you that you've given us the ability to express our worship and our praise before you today. We thank you that you're here with us this morning. We want to tell you that we love you. Come on, just wherever you are, just tell him you love him. If you've known and experienced Jesus' love and his touch, on your life and within your heart just tell him where you are it doesn't have to be out loud you can just verbalize it inwardly just say Jesus I love you today I love you and I thank you that you love me and it's only because you first love me that I can love you we're going to share communion together this is something that we do on the first Sunday of, of every month and so this is an open invitation that if you know and love the Lord Jesus we encourage you to to do this with us I'm hoping that you've picked up a little communion cup as you came in there's the wafer in there there's the juice this is something that we're going to do together but let me read some verses of scripture as we as we do this this is what the apostle Paul someone who was a fierce persecutor of Christians had this encounter with Jesus and it radically transformed his life. It went on to become perhaps the greatest missionary the world has ever known. Went on to write so much of what we now, now know as the New Testament. This is what he writes to the church, a group of believers just like you or me in a place called Ephesus. He said, once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins, you used to live in sin just like the rest of the world obeying the devil the murder the, the commander of the powers in the unseen world he's the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God and all of us all of us used to live that way following the passionate desires and the inclinations of our sinful nature by our very nature we were subject to God's anger just like everyone else but God but God is so rich in mercy. Aren't you glad about that today? But God is so rich in mercy. And he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. He goes on to say, God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It's a gift from God. Salvation's not a reward for the good things we've done. So, so none of us can boast about it. He says, for we are God's masterpiece. Isn't that lovely? You know, I want you to tell yourself this morning that you're God's masterpiece. So often we look at ourselves and we look at the stuff that we've done wrong and we, we don't think this of us, but this is what God's word says about you. This is how God feels towards you this morning, no matter who you are. You're his masterpiece. He loves you. He loves you. He goes on to say, Paul writes, you lived in this world without God and without hope. And we've all been there. But now, 
you've been united with Christ Jesus. Once you were far away from God, but now you have been brought near to him through the blood of Christ. If you've got your cup, why don't we share this together? Let's just take the wafer. It symbolizes the body of Jesus that was broken for us. Together as we've got this, let's eat this in remembrance of him this morning. together it reminds us of the blood of Jesus that he willingly shed for you and for me the scripture says that without the shedding of blood there can be no forgiveness of sins but this is a is a visible reminder to us today that our sins have been forgiven and that we can stand righteous before a holy God isn't that wonderful to know that today the blood of Jesus shed for you attitude of thankfulness this morning. I want us to pray for some people. I've got a number of prayer cards here, so I'm going to go through these. Because we're a praying people, aren't we? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> we know that when we pray, God hears us and, and, and God answers. Not always straight away always in the way that we'd like him to or the speed at which we'd like him to but you know he always hears us and so we never stop praying and so I've got a number of things for us to, to pray for together so we can pray for our young people we've got a whole load of them there's around 40 odd 45 I think young people um, away at their limitless youth camp the festival with a number of the teams so there's around 55 I think in total there Paul and Hannah Simon a whole number of the team here there with them, looking after them, cooking for them. So let's pray for them. Let's pray that they have the most amazing time away at the camp. It's gonna, I think there's around four to 5,000 young people that are going to be there. And uh, the weather, it was a very wet setup for them yesterday. So let's pray that that, that that weather improves. If you've ever been camping, you know that it's, it's well, you can tolerate it if you get good weather, can't you? <laughs> So let's really pray for them there as well. And also that they get plenty of sleep. I don't think they had much sleep last night. So remember all of our young people and, and the team who were there in Stafford at the showground this week. Then there's some other people really need our prayers. Lucia hasn't been with us last couple of weeks. She had a recent MRI scan and they've uh, they detected some things there. So they're sending her to the Walton Center for some further investigation. If we can remember Lucia in our prayers, if we can continue to remember Chris and Brian Woodcock, I know they'll be watching online. We love you guys, praying for you. After the recent diagnosis that, that Chris had, please, if we can keep them in our prayers. Steve Sider, I know Steve's here this morning. Steve said that his mom's had a fall. She's not well. If we can pray for his mom, Pat. If we can continue to remember Blair in our prayers over there as well. He's got another two hospital appointments this week following the the, uh, the, the growth that they've, they've found upon on him as well if we can remember Blair in our prayers Jean's filled in a card this morning uh, or had it filled in for her she's not well tummy upset really really not feeling well at all and a couple of others here Claire's uh, uh, filled this in a friend's mom was dying and he had no way to get there so I went and picked him up from Blackpool drove him to, to Nutsford and back to Blackpool but his mom passed away this morning just really believe that that was a divine appointment for her to go and be with him and so if we can just remember uh, friends uh, uh, family in prayer who are going through that loss and that she might be used in that process to bring help and and healing as well and then also for Barbara's filled one in please pray for my daughter-in-law Sarah having uh, severe thyroid symptoms and she's been diagnosed with with Graves Syndrome, I think that says, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Graves, Graves Syndrome, Louise's 
sister-in-law, if we can remember her and the family in our prayers. You know, just this week I've had real bad pain in my shoulder and I'm, I'm pleased to say that I'm, I'm a lot better with that now. But just this week, I've just had it just upon my heart. If there's anyone here and they've got a, they've been suffering with a frozen shoulder or uh, the rotator cuff injury, just, that, that, just those things have very much been upon my heart this morning. I, I don't know if that is anyone. Just, just put your hand up if, if, if that's you. I'm just going to put it out there. So over there, is the frozen shoulder, is it? Or the, the rotator cuff? I wonder if one or two, would, would you let one or two of the team just, just pray for you this morning over these moments? Maybe one or two church, can we just get up and just pray for this lovely lady over, over here at the back? Just put your hand up again if, if that's okay. Maybe use the shoulder that's not as, <laughs> isn't there. But, uh, but we're just really trusting that God will come and minister to you this morning. You know, I've got a couple of praise reports as well because it's always good, isn't it, to back up the prayer request with some praise reports. And we've been praying for a number of people. Last week, we were praying for Carol. Carol uh, went for a scan. Uh, they thought they got a, uh, she got a blood clot uh, behind that she was having to have removed. But she went for the scan this week, and there's no sign of a blood clot anywhere. And so we thank God for that. We thank God for that. If you're going to clap, church, let's do it properly. It's not it. <laughs> But Chris, Chris Penfold Ivany, all that he's been through with the, 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 the transplant and everything. And so Chris has filled in a card. Blood levels now back to normal. His liver's functioning well. He's just got four cycles of treatment left, which is really good news for him. This is, this is my, it's lovely to see Kath back with us. This morning, Kath had had a fall and she's filled out a, prayer, a, a praise report saying, just thanking God, the Lord has answered. The, uh, the prayers. I've made great progress. I'm so pleased to be here today. We're delighted that you're back with us. Kath, as well. Tina's, I've seen Tina around somewhere just, just over there. Tina said she's had the worst fibromyalgia flare up this week in years and there's been an awful lot of overwhelming pain and tiredness. And she asked for prayer. And when the pain is bad, I do breathing exercises and uh, ask. God for his presence to fill me and the pain subsides and she's just saying that the prayer that she's received this week has, has really helped her and really believing that she's on the other side of that and we thank God for that you know we serve a good God we serve a good God I don't know what it is that you might be going through but I want to ask us to stand if we can and just take these few moments to continue just, just to pray the other praise card that I've got here is uh, Ashley and Charlotte are here this morning and Lily May and I think we've got a graphic as well we can just put up on the screen that uh, baby Jack was born this week there we go safe arrival of baby Jack born on Monday 8 pounds 13 and a half ounce there's one proud big sister there holding him. We Bob Brown yesterday had the, were able to have a little cuddle with him as well. He's absolutely gorgeous. And we thank God for his safe arrival today as well. I know there have been some, some issues in build-up to it, but it's so good to see you guys here with us. Let's give Ashley and Charlotte particularly a big round of applause. And, but, you know, let's just turn. There's that line in that song, isn't there, that says, every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. And we've got some things to thank him for, but we've got some things to pray about this morning as well. And so church, can we just take these few moments and just engage? I'm not going to go through all those again, but just pick up on some of those. You might be here and you've got a need. Can we just use these moments just to bring these needs before God, bring these people before God? Uh, just keep praying for that, for that lady over there with that rotator cuff injury. Father, we're asking for complete healing in this, in the name of Jesus, that all pain will be gone in the name of Jesus. I don't believe that you reveal these things to us for, uh, 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 for, for no reason at all, Lord God, that there's a, something that you want to do in this lady's life today, and we're trusting for healing. And Father, for all these that we've mentioned, and there are many, and we know that they're not just individuals that we're talking about here, but we're talking about family units and wider family units and the impact that it has upon jobs and and being able to work and all these things. Father, we bring them all before you because you are a good God. 
We've been singing about your amazing love and we're asking that your love would come and fill every person's heart that we have mentioned here this morning and those that maybe haven't filled out a prayer card. God, we're asking that, that you would come and fill them afresh with your love and fill them afresh with your hope in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you that for you, nothing is too difficult. And we want to give you praise. Can we just sing that chorus through again? Hold me close. Let your love surround me. And let's just make this our prayer before him this morning as we ask Jesus to come and draw ever closer by his spirit. Let's applaud Jesus this morning. Let's thank him for his goodness. Lord, we love you. We love you. And we just acknowledge your, your kingship over our lives. Amen. Amen. Listen, why don't we show the band a bit of love as well. Thank them for leading us. And then we want to give you just a minute, 60 seconds to turn around, mingle, say hello to someone, greet them, let them introduce themselves or you to them, but let's make everyone feel welcome here this morning. Okay, if you just want to be looking to take your seats, that would be great. So it really is great to have you here with us this morning. Again, to those of you watching online, great to have you. If we can just take our seats. Those of you watching online, please, if you've just joined us since we started, do drop a comment in the chat on Oan, who's our online host. would love to be able to connect with you. But if you are here this morning and it's your first time in person, I'm hoping that as you came in, you will have been handed one of these blue bags from one of our team. There's some details in there about who we are as a church, along with a few of the little goodies for you there to, to keep as well. One of the things we'd love to ask you to do, you don't have to, but we'd love to ask you, invite you to do that is to fill out this blue card that you'll find inside that bag there's a pen in there as well that you can do that with drop it in the offering container a little bit later on when that comes round 
and uh, simply because we'd love to write out to you to say thank you for, for being here with us. But maybe you're looking for a church to become a part of. We'd love to be able to have that conversation with you, just tell you a, a little bit more about who we are, where we're heading, all that kind of thing. And so uh, that will just enable us to be able to do that. The other way that you can do it is if you've got a phone or a tablet, you can open up the camera app on there. You can scan that QR code on the back of the seat in front of you. Unless you're sitting on the front row, that is. You'll just have to <laughs> lean behind and uh, fill it in on there. That'll take you through to a page on the website where you can do that. Tick that box, and again, that will come through so we can make contact. But we'd love to be able to connect. And if you're up for that, we'd love to arrange to have a coffee with you on us so we can uh, chat more. But all the details you'll find in that bag. A couple of things just to, to mention. First of all, that we've got our next Alpha course that's starting next month now. I can't believe we're in August already, can you? And so next month, September, it seems months ago when we first put this together, but we've got our next Alpha course starting Wednesday, the 13th of September. That's the launch night, so we'd love to invite you. If you've never been through Alpha or you've got friends that you know are, are, are maybe exploring Christianity or would really value coming through that, we would love to encourage you to invite them to come along. If you go through to our website again, on our website, uh, lakesidechurch.uk, there's a page on there designated for Alpha where you can sign up. But we would love to encourage you to do that. Get thinking about who you can invite, get praying into that, and then get inviting them. And uh, together, this is the third one that we've run this year, so we'd love to see that one full like the others have pretty much been as well. So any more details on that, you can either chat with myself, one of the team, or Richard and Debbie, who are here this morning. Richard and Debbie, just, just stand up. Let's give them a little round of applause. I think Richard's milking it for everything there, isn't he? <laughs> but they do such a phenomenal job leading Alpha as well. So if you want to find out more, have a chat with them. They'll be upstairs in the coffee house afterwards. They'd love to give you more information. And then in relation to the Love Southport campaign that we've got taking place next month. We've got something really exciting that we're going to be sharing. We were hoping to be able to share it this morning, but just through a couple of uh, issues that we've had this week, we're not quite able to do that. But we're hoping there's going to be a new Love Southport website live this week that's got details on there. So keep a lookout on our social media channels for some updates on that this week. And we'll certainly be looking to show that next week anyway. But we're really excited about this campaign. And if you're here and you're thinking, what's this campaign? Where have you been the last three, three weeks? <laughs> but then also, just come and have a chat with us because we'd love to fill you in and tell you about all that's going to be taking place with that. Last thing is, we're going to be taking our offering right up at the end. So uh, one of the things that we believe is that everything we have is because God's given it to us to begin with. And so worship is more than just about singing songs together. It's about honoring him with every part of our lives. And we believe that everything that we have is because he's given it to us in the first place. And so giving a, a, a portion of our finance back to him uh, through the local church enables us to, to continue to reach out to people with this amazing message of God's love. So we're going to be taking that up right at the very end. Containers will come around if you prefer to give physically rather than digitally. But there's some details that you can do that online as well there. That's all the notices. I said, uh, uh, what would it be, five, six weeks ago now when we started this new series, this summer series that we're working through, Summer on the Mount, there's going to be some different voices. You'll be glad to hear that it's not just me uh, uh, bringing that every week. And so this morning, I'm, I'm really pleased to invite Ralph. Ralph's part of our church. Him and Carol have been with us for what? Is it over, just over a year, 18 months now? Yeah. And so uh, Ralph's ministered in, in different parts of the of the world and that before as well. I know he was recently over in Uganda on a mission trip over there around Easter time. And uh, so absolutely pleased to invite Ralph to come and bring us the next message in our Summer on the Mount series. Let's give him a welcome as he comes and join us. Yeah, Father, we, we thank you for Ralph. Thank you for uh, the word that you've put upon his heart for us today. And Lord God, we just thank you for him and Carol. And we ask that he might know your blessing and you're anointing upon him now as he comes and brings your word to us. Give us ears to hear all that you want to say to us and that ability to apply it to our lives. We ask all this in and through the name of Jesus and all God's people said, Amen. God bless you, Ralph. Bless you. Good morning, everyone. It's great, great to be with you 
here this morning. I'd like to thank Pastor Richard for letting me share here with you this morning. And, you know, the thing that really struck me just the other day was the title of this, um, this series called Summer on the Mount. And as I looked out at the weather... I thought really a more appropriate title would be Winter on the Mount. And that got me thinking even further because there's a, pre a TV program called Homes in the Sun. And I thought, I wonder in Italy and Spain and places like that, do they have homes in the rain? <laughs> because if they did, I had this picture. You could take them to Blackpool. It's raining, the wind's blowing. They're waiting for the train. The train gets cancelled. Makes them feel really at home. I think that's got potential. <laughs> anyway, we've been working through the Beatitude. And I think the thing it tells us straight away is the love of God. As we look through each and every one of those talks, we see how much God loves each and every one of us. God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son, that those who believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And I don't know about you, as I look back through my life, I realise how much God has loved me. I've still got a long way to go, my wife will tell you, I've still got a long way to go. But I know where I came from, I know where I am now. God has brought me so far. And I'm so grateful for that. And I'm sure as I look around here, each and every one of you feel the same way. Richard started us off, didn't he, so superbly as he spoke about those who were poor in spirit. He set the sort of scene for this whole series. Then Steve, and I'm afraid I can't do it without notes, but Steve spoke just so superbly about those who mourn. Then George took us through those who are humble. And Paul then challenged us. He challenged us so strongly about the whole area of righteousness and justice. And it's something that I've done many years, actually. But he challenged me afresh. Because however you are, how old you are here today, God has still got something for you. God has got a job for each and every person here. As you look around you, there's so much cause for righteousness and for justice. And then last week, John spoke about those who are merciful. What a wonderful talk that was as well. But today our subject is number six in the Beatitude. God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. That challenges me. That challenges me just so much. And I'm calling today's talk, How is your heart? How is your heart? Because that is the big determining factor. I'm not talking about your physical heart, although that's important, we all want it to keep beating. But what I'm actually talking about here is how is your heart spiritually? How pure is your heart? As I stopped and just thought about that, and it's a biggie, isn't it? We're told that the pure in heart will see God. I remember George saying the other week that these are all in the order that God wants us to hear them in. But why do I think this one's so important? It's because Jesus was summing up the commandments. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 22, 37, he says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. And he says this is the first and the greatest of the commandments. And the question this morning is, how can we love God with all of our heart if our heart is divided? 
God has just poured out so much love into us that we need to allow him to then put that love out to those around us. I actually looked this up. I, I didn't know it. But what I do know is this. We're told 366 times in the Bible, do not fear. And people say this is really important. Indeed it is. But do you know how many times the heart is mentioned? How many times is the heart mentioned in the Bible? The answer is 826. The Bible's mentioned 826 times in the Bible. And yet, the brain, the brain is not mentioned once. That tells us how important the heart is. How important God believes the heart is. Because 826 times it's mentioned. That is amazing. But I want to tell you about a guy. It's a guy who decided he was going to do an experiment. I know I'm not allowed to use the names of brands or whatever, so I'm just going to tell you this is an American fast food chain with a Scottish name. <laughs> Morgan Spurlock was his name, and he ate these fast foods three times a day for a month. Just stop and think about that for a moment. If I eat one every three years, it's too much. But he starts off as a healthy 32-year-old. And he embarks on this challenge. But what happens to him? Well, in the next 30 days, he deteriorates rapidly. As he consumed 5,000 calories a day. His health declined. He gained 25 pounds. For those of you who don't do proper weights, that's 11.1 kilograms. <laughs> and his cholesterol just shot up. Risk of heart attack doubled. And he had liver failure. He was going well. And he also reported chest pains, exhaustion, mood swings. And wait for it, his love life deteriorated. The bottom line is this. What you take in through the mouth affects the health of your body. We all know that, don't we? But you see, in the same way that food affects the body, what we hear and what we see affects the heart. It affects the heart. Solomon, son of King David, who we're told had great wisdom, he wrote this in Proverbs 4.23. He says, above all else, guard the heart. Guard the heart. For everything you do flows from it. You know, we need to guard our heart. What we see, what we hear, it affects our heart. And it's the heart that determines who we are. The heart determines who we are. And I was just thinking about some of the things that perhaps affect us there. Television, some music, the media, all of this has a big effect upon us. Some is good, but some of it is far from good. And it causes impurity in the heart. It corrupts the heart. It feeds into us negativeness. It gives us the things that we don't want. When I lived here before the first time, which was about 20 years ago, I was at uh, Liverpool Prison at the time. I wasn't an inmate. I was a chaplain. <laughs> and uh, it was the time, some of you may remember this, a small child, Jamie Bulger, he was, he was killed by two 10-year-olds. And it came out that he had been watching horror movies. It reminds us of the effect that something like this can have some effect 
on somebody who is so pure. Ten-year-old children affected to the point that they do something like this. And this is why when we read God's word, the Bible, and we listen to Christian worship songs, we listen to sermons, it's good food for our hearts. It's healthy. It builds us up. It moves us towards that purity, towards that love of God that we've been thinking about here this morning. And it changes the atmosphere. It changes the atmosphere around us. And as we do this, the love of Christ comes upon us. As the love of Christ comes upon us, we then start to operate, to think and to feel the same as Jesus. And that's what we all want here this morning, isn't it? To stand and be more like Jesus. I know I do. Do I get an amen? amen. That's encouraging. You know, many people have been hurt over the years. I know I have. Often by what people have said, what people have done, either to us or about us. And when this happens, it's hurtful, particularly when it's a brother or a sister in Christ. And not long before I came here, that's exactly what happened to me. And I've had to actually be rebuilt. Jesus has had to work away at my heart, forgiving me, or forgiving them, and healing me of that hurt. And I'm sure as I'm speaking here this morning, there's people here that feel exactly the same. They've been hurt, and they need healing. Perhaps they've done something themselves, and they need forgiveness, but it's there in the heart. We carry that pain with us. We are who we are. Many have been badly let down, causing anger, causing resentment. But I tell you this this morning, if we don't let go of that, if we don't allow that healing, it grows within us like a cancer, and it gets worse and worse and worse. We have to let it go. If we allow it to fester, then it affects the heart. And yet, as always, there's good news. Isaiah 61.1 says this, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He sent me to bind up, wait for it, he sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom to captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. This is the promise of God. And Jesus quotes this in Luke 4. He doesn't actually specifically mention brokenhearted, but he employs it as he, as he speaks here. And this morning, he's saying to each and every one of us, don't carry this around in your heart. Come to me. I will heal your heart. And I will set you free. I will set you free. There's freedom for each and every one of us. There's joy in the Lord Jesus. I want to urge you this morning, if this is you, don't leave here today without allowing Jesus to do that work in your heart, to heal the brokenhearted, to bind you up and to set you free. I had a friend, that may come as a surprise to some of you, but I had a friend and he told me many years ago that as we go further in our walk, he said we become more and more aware of our sinfulness, of the things that separate us from God. But when we confess from our heart our sinfulness, then it's completely wiped away. Isn't that a miracle? When we confess our sinfulness, it's forgiven and it's wiped away. We have a clean sweet, a clean slate. You know, we cannot get a pure heart 
in our own strength. Only God can do that. It's only God who can actually give us that pure heart. Ezekiel was a prophet in 586 BC. And it says this in Ezekiel 36, 26. I will give you a new heart and I put a new spirit within you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and I'll give you a heart of flesh. What an amazing promise that is, that God is going to do that. It's a promise that we can claim. He's going to remove our divided heart, that heart that's impure, and he's going to replace it. He's going to replace it with a pure heart. And this is good news. Praise God. I wasn't always a Christian. I did some things that weren't good. But you know, no matter how impure your life is right now, God will offer you that fresh start. It's maybe you've never heard this before. Maybe this is the first time that you have heard this message of how much God loves you, what state your heart is in. But I want to tell you here this morning, nobody is too bad, I can tell you that, for Jesus to save you, to set you free, to turn you around, to make you a new creation. God can change your life. We have a saying here at uh, Lakeside, and I've adopted this one. Not only does God make life better, but he makes us better at life. I think this is a great slogan. I don't know whether Richard thought it up or whether he got it from somewhere. I'm sure he thought it up. But I'm telling you, this is a great slogan because it tells us exactly what God does for us. Because with Jesus... In our life, life is better. Life is better. And he also makes us better at life. Because the things that I've been through over the years, in particular the last couple of years before we moved here, I don't know how we would have got through it without Jesus. And I'm sure that as you look back through your lives, you can say the same. I would not have got through that if Jesus hadn't have been in it with me. That's a great God that we've got. He doesn't leave us on our own when we're at the darkest point, when we're in situations that we don't know what's going on. He's there with us. Psalm 51.10 was written by King David and for those who don't know, he was a shepherd boy who became king of, of Israel. He was the one who killed Goliath. And he says this, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. You know, this is a prayer, really. Because each and every one of us should be praying this. Often we pray for things going on in our lives, in our family, at work, in the community, maybe around the world. But the one thing we should be praying for is that we have this pure heart. A heart that brings us closer to Jesus. A heart that makes us more caring. A heart that makes us more like him. A heart that is so pure that we can get near to God. In our reading, we are told, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. When we become a Christian, the Holy Spirit comes and lives within us. And there's a change, 
a change that takes place as we become more and more like Jesus. This is called sanctification. And all of this takes place within us to make us more and more like Jesus. We see things through his eyes and we show more love. I was speaking at a pastor's conference in Ethiopia and uh, we went to this big hall and outside was this beggar and he had this toy that kept making the same noise over and over again. I couldn't really work out what the idea of that was because instead of drawing people nearer, I'm sure it drove people further away, but that's what he was doing. And in the conference, I said to these guys, and these are really good, good pastors, good guys, I said, what did you see as you came into the hall today? And they all sat there and looked back at me, and they obviously thought I'd lost the plot at last. Some of them knew that anyway. <laughs> and then I said to them this. I said, did you see the beggar outside the hall? And suddenly the light came on, and they went, oh, yes, yes. You see, the problem is, we're so used to what we see in our communities. We're so used to the things that are around us that we see it, but we don't see it. We need to pray. We need to pray, as the song says, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. You know, I never really used to understand that. I used to say, where are the, where are the eyes of my heart? But as I've been preparing this, I became more and more aware that as we have that heart of Christ, as we start to see things through the eyes of Christ, as we get more and more like him, we see things that perhaps previously we haven't seen. We see the person down the road who's struggling. We see the person down the road struggling with the four or five kids or whatever on their own. Suddenly, we start to see things through different eyes. The church I used to pastor, at the start of a year, I used to challenge them. And I used to say to them, are you more like Jesus than you were a year ago? And I can ask you the same question here this morning. Are you more like Jesus now? than you were a year ago. I think that's a challenge for all of us because as I ask you that, I ask myself the same question. Are we more like Jesus than we were a year ago? Because we should be. We should be. As the Holy Spirit works away within us, we should be becoming more and more like Jesus. So what is a pure heart? What is a pure heart? Well, a pure heart is a heart that can be used by God. Not by our own perfection, but because we're willing to learn, to be corrected, to repent, and to change. It's a heart that reflects the heart of Jesus. I follow Pastor Leon Evans on Facebook. I'm sure he's always delighted that I'm following him. And basically, he wrote this the other day. And it really sort of hit me hard. He said, change has to be intentional. Passivity don't work. We have to be intentional about wanting to be like Jesus. We want to be intentional about allowing him to work away in our hearts. We have to be intentional about giving love out into this community. God, by the power of the Spirit, works away within us. But we have to be willing to change. We cannot have a divided heart. 
We have to allow God to change us. And we have to cooperate in making that change. I believe that's what God's saying to each and every one of us here this morning. We need to be intentional, brothers and sisters. If we want to really change this community, we really have to reflect the heart of Jesus as individuals and as a church. A pure heart is quick to obey and quick to repent all about of our love for God. And I want to say to you this morning, how much do you really love God? Do you really love him with all of your heart as that commandment says? Or do you just love him a bit? That's a challenge for each and every one of us. And the second point is this. The most significant part of purity is that it allows us into God's presence. You know, I've now taught the Imagine Heaven course three times here at Lakeside. And it talks about people who've had these near-death experiences. And they've had a glimpse of heaven. A glimpse of heaven. And it's really interesting because the thing they all talk about is the overwhelming sense of love, of joy, of purity. They said there's no experience of that old negativity. There's no nastiness. There's nothing bad. None of that exists. It's pure. And nothing that is impure is allowed in. We need to be like that. We need to have that same level of purity. Those who have experienced this have returned and they've changed. We don't have to have this experience we can change anyway. We can be more and more like Jesus. <coughs> and thirdly, you have to be true to your heart. True to your heart. Because if you're not being true to your heart, then how can you be true to others? The only person who knows the true state of your heart is you and Jesus. Jesus. You see, if you're not being true to your heart, then it's all false. It's all meaningless. You see, we have nothing to fear. There's nothing that Jesus doesn't know about us. He knows every single thing about us. He knows us better than we know ourselves. Nothing, absolutely nothing. It's another song coming on. You'll be fortunate to know I'm not going to sing. But there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Isn't that wonderful? Absolutely nothing. He loves each and every one of us more than we could ever imagine. However much you love your, your wife, your husband, your partner, your children, Jesus loves you. Much, much more than that. It's that love that once we have it in our hearts, we can then share with others. Revelation 3.20 was written by John and he says, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him, with that person, and they with me. This morning, do you know that there's bits of your heart that you have not given over entirely to Jesus? If so, this morning is a good time to allow him to enter fully in to all areas of your heart. Are you carrying hurts? Have people harmed you? Have you carried that around for years? Today is a good day to allow Jesus to heal your heart. If this is the first time that you have heard this, then it's the first step is to ask Jesus to come into your heart. It's a time 
for us to be honest. Honest with ourselves and honest with God. I'm going to pray now and as I pray, you can make this your own personal prayer. It's just between you and Jesus. Don't worry about the person on your left or the person on your right. The person that we are praying to already knows. And he loves you. He loves you. There's nothing to fear. Let's just be silent for a moment, shall we, and reflect upon these words. And then I'm going to pray. Perhaps the group could join me back here on the on the platform. There's a bit that says that we examine ourselves. And that's what we've got to do now, is examine ourselves. It's not the pastor's job to sort out your individual walk with Jesus. That's down to you. Heavenly Father, we come here this morning and we just thank you, Lord, for how much you love us. You love us that much that Jesus died for us. As we, Lord, we remembered earlier all that you've done for us. And we pray now, Lord, that you would just come. Come by the power of your Holy Spirit. And Lord, I pray this morning that you will just come into my heart. That you will come and live within me. I'm sorry, Lord, for those things that I may have done that have not been pleasing to you. And I repent of that this morning. And I pray, Lord, that you will come now that you will just pour out your love into my heart, that you will make my heart pure, that you will make me more and more like you. And I pray now for those who perhaps have been hurt, those who are hurting, those who perhaps carry unforgiveness, I pray, Lord, that you will just calm now, that you will bind up their broken heart, that you will heal them, that they will know your love in a very real way. And I pray, Lord, that as we leave here today, we'll take this love of Christ out into the community, that we will just show that love to those around us. If that's the first time that you've asked Jesus to come into your heart, could you just quickly put up your hand while everybody's eyes are closed, just so that I can see you? It's just between you and God. Nobody else will know. If you've done that online for the first time, then just put a thumbs up emoji or whatever, and then we can get in touch with you and follow that up. So, Father, we just thank you that you have come, that you've been with us this morning here in a real way. And I pray, Lord, that these words that we've heard, that we won't just be hearers of the word, but that we'll be doers of the word. For I pray this in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Hey, Ralph, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. So much gold in there. Thank you so much. And uh, I encourage you to listen through that again. That'll be posted up very shortly after the service. So, uh, Ralph, we just say thanks for, for sharing that so clearly this morning. Why don't you stand to your feet if you're able to? The team are going to play us out with one song. We're going to take up our offering. As I said before, this is part of what we do, just part of our worship before God. If you're a guest here, Please feel free to let these containers go before you. There is absolutely no obligation for you to give here at all. Um, if you want to, that's fine, but there's no obligation to that. And then there's going to be some teas and coffees being served upstairs, so please don't rush off. We would love you to join with us upstairs, have a bit of fellowship afterwards, and uh, just before you head off into the afternoon, 
and into this week ahead. So, so let's stand. The team are going to lead us as we conclude our time together. was speaking, I was reminded of uh, something David wrote in one of his Psalms, Psalm 86 and, and verse 11. Let me just read this to you. He says, teach me your ways, O Lord, that I may live according to your truth. And then he says this, grant me purity of heart. Other versions say an undivided heart, but grant me purity of heart so that I may honor you with all my heart. I will praise you, O Lord, my God. Father, we pray that as we make that our prayer. God, would you grant us purity of heart that we may please you and honour you in all things. And as we step out into this week and all that it holds, Father, may we keep our eyes fixed firmly upon you and that you will lead us and guide us into all truth. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Please don't rush off. There's free teas and coffees being served upstairs. So if you don't know where to go, just follow the crowd. They'll lead you up into the coffee house overlooking the lake. We'd love you to join with us. But have a great week and God bless you. And if you're going on holiday this week as well, have a fantastic time. <laughs>